Hello folks. In this lesson we're going to go over very quickly how to properly construct a demand curve and actually properly construct any graph in either AP or IB economics. Examiners on the uh, AP examination and on the International Baccalaureate examination are sticklers for correctly and properly constructed graphs. So we need to get in the habit very, very early on in the course in making sure that uh, all the expected elements of graphs are present. So here we go. We're starting here with a demand schedule, which you've seen before. In this case, we're taking a look at uh, the price of chocolate bars and the quantity demanded of chocolate bars. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to construct our vertical and horizontal axes. We're going to give our market a heading. In this case, we're looking at the chocolate bar market. Always, always make sure that your graphs have a proper heading. And in, in the case of microeconomics, you have to make sure that the market is clearly distinguished. We're going to add our units for the vertical axis for our market. Uh, units are always in price. In this case, that dollars is assumed. Go ahead and label our vertical axis price. Horizontal axis is always quantity. In this case, the units are by two instead of by by one. And now we're ready to go. We're going to take our information from our graph and plot our points. Uh, the first point we note is at a price of five. Two chocolate bars are demanded. So we find our 5-2 point, and we're going to go ahead and place a dot there. We're going to find our, our next five points. I'm going to do this very quickly and establish those. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to find a line of best fit, which I've kind of drawn there. And there we have our downward sloping demand curve accurately constructed based on our demand schedule. If units are not given, in this case they are, we've got units given on a demand schedule, but if units are not given, then uh, units here in terms of price and quantity are not necessary. You do not need to make them up and in fact if you incorporate them when units aren't given it sometimes makes the analysis a little bit more difficult. So if you're making up your own example uh, try to avoid using the units. It's a lot easier just to throw up a demand curve or later on a supply curve uh, minus units but in this particular case units are given so we'll go ahead and put them up in terms of price and in terms of quantity. We want to make sure that we label our demand curve. D is sufficient. Uh, I've just put in parentheses here demand. And if we want to show an increase in demand, as I've done here, always include very quickly those these arrows which I've done and go ahead and shift our curve. And there's our new demand curve and I've labeled it D1 to distinguish it from our original demand curve here at D. If I want to show a decrease in demand, there it is. Uh, there's my new left shifted demand curve to show a decrease in, in demand. And again, it's a good idea to include those arrows. And again, the very last thing we want to do is label our demand curve, new demand curve D2, to distinguish it from our original and our last. That's really all there is to it. Uh, you want to make sure that the graphs that you create look very, very similar to the ones that I've just created. Look forward to seeing you next time. Hope that was clear. Bye.